like that. Um, have you ever noticed how fortune favors the bold, you know, men and women who act boldly? While fortune doesn't give two flips about those who consider themselves bold. And these two guys are definitely acting uh, in faith on bold. I mean, honestly, fortune doesn't care what someone believes. It doesn't, uh, it's not seduced by action. It actually uh, wants you to take action and execute. And these gentlemen are actually doing it. And that's why I appreciate um, that I get to be humbled here and sit on stage and listen to them. Uh, and the things they're talking about, um, because at the end of the day, um, your opportunity begins at the end of your excuses. And as you listen to them talk, and hopefully you'll get some of this from me today, um, when I stopped making excuses, that's when my opportunity began. And for me, <clears throat> it took a very life-changing couple of moments for it to kind of redefine over the years uh, the opportunities that I've been presented with now, specifically in the e-commerce space. And as you mentioned, we're about private label brands and we launch and grow, build, scale, exit, and now acquire brands uh, in this space. So if you've been familiar at all with the Kiyosaki, uh, Kiyosaki Quadrant, um, I have moved from the W2 employee uh, who just took a leap of faith and jumped into a business when IBM said, hey, maybe it's time for you to go. And I said, great, I'm out of here. I, you can't fire me, I quit. Um, <laughs> but I got my early termination package, I did it nicely. So what I learned was you know, not to burn bridges, but it's okay to burn the boats. And I think sometimes people don't understand the difference. What I meant is by burning boats, I literally just said, I'm never going back. The boats are gone, I can't go back, I can only go forward. And I think a lot of times in people's minds when they step out on faith, when they step out on action, when they when they make a move and they're thinking about taking this W-2 or they're jumping in another business deal or they're growing their business, they always wonder what the risk looks like. Um, how can I mitigate that? And if it doesn't work well, how do I go backwards? And I think the answer is that you never considers ever going backwards. You only consider going forward. And it is something that I learned in perseverance and tenacity and grit through ups and very lows. Um, while it sounds good and fine to say that where I'm at now uh, is a reflection of 17 years of perfect action, it's actually um, wrong. It's 17 years of completely imperfect action, followed by moments of perfection um, and saving grace, <laughs> literally. Uh, in those things that occurred. Um, something, you know, that, that just came in time and came through opportunities and weaved my way around these different things that I thought I would be doing and ultimately landed in a place I didn't ever expect to be in, quite honestly. But now that I'm there, I can't see myself doing anything differently, if that makes sense. But through that and, and growing, I learned how to become a man. I learned how to become a businessman. I learned how to become a father and a husband and a and a man of action and someone who leads his family before others. And so through that process and with the help of my wife and with the loving grace of Jesus, I've been able to homeschool my children and I've been able to grow a business. I've been able to homestead 50 acres in the country and, and be able to push purpose above profits. And that's kind of the message that I heard from these two gentlemen this morning. And I just want to echo that in my own life, because ultimately when you push purpose ahead of profits, you will see so much more greater reward because you will ultimately give more than you take. Now, profits can obviously grow out of that, but they're not always just financial. The word profit is always immediately attributed to financial, but it's almost never expected to be financial. Financial is the byproduct of the work and effort. The reward comes from the work and the effort, whether you're rewarding yourself personally, feeling good, setting your right activities, setting the right time in morning or evening or night, as Spencer has suggested about where you feel most productive. And I refer to that and others might have is putting your oxygen mask on before trying to help others. And some of you are out here sucking wind because you haven't got your mask on yet. And I love the way Spencer uh, helped us align what is you know good about our time in life. And by the way, Spencer, I'm much better in the later afternoons till two o'clock in the morning, even though I can get up at like eight o'clock every day at the same time. It's just where does your maximum productivity and sleep benefit you? And you need to figure these things out. Why? Because in that process will come your purpose. And in time, I have learned to, to realize that my business is just the gas in the engine of my car. And my car really is the purpose because the car is what takes me forward. It takes my family. It takes my business, it takes my clients forward. Um, without that gas, the, the car just sits there and looks really pretty and doesn't go anywhere. 
So we have to remember at times how to gas our car, how to move things forward. And as Mark Cuban said, if you don't have the resources, you need to be resourceful. So I know at times when we talk about business and building and the kind of numbers that now I've been blessed to do at this stage in my business, to me, talking about, you know, a million dollar or five and a $10 million business deal is about the same as it was when I was talking about five or $10 when I was broke. Um, it's just a different level of money, a different level of thinking, a different level of risk. And then the process of going up in business and crashing and the process of becoming a very arrogant, prideful person who put profit above purpose, purpose and wrecked a marriage in the process of that and was humbled and then didn't quite learn that process because I'm extremely stubborn um, in case anybody noticed that. So by you know doing business and thinking I could just be all in all and continuing to push profits above purpose because I didn't learn. Um, I went bankrupt once, right? Um, and come to realize it's not the worst thing that can happen in the world. Uh, because during that process of going bankrupt and being humbled, I also learned what it meant to lo almost lose my wife through a very significant medical condition that occurred. And during that process in her uh, recovery, um, by the grace of God, she recovered and is okay. But in that moment when she died in front of me in the, in the hospital room, uh, I thought for just a split second, I was going to be a single father of four children at the age of five. My entire moment crashed. My entire purpose changed. My entire focus shifted. When she went to the second operation, because the first one failed, um, I thought again, this is going to be my life. I had to prepare myself in the hospital, 36 hours of this. And by the third time, uh, when she went back for the third time, I really thought that this was going to happen. I didn't even know she had lived through the first surgery or the second one. And it's just absolutely 36 hours of hell. But what it did was it actually just broke me in my mind and refocused my purpose over profits and said that never again was I going to put business ahead of family, business ahead of life, business ahead of my wife. And with that gave me the new founded purpose of driving people forward in my business. What I mean by that is I shifted to, to the e-com side of the business where I put operators and put in, in trained operators literally to run the businesses themselves so that by a you know, by product, um, they would become operators and businesses that I was looking to buy. So as I turned purpose into their life and helped them build their business, in turn, we did business deals and started to grow. As that continued to grow and have more and more success, I now have more and more operators. So my business is literally made up of <laughs> that is a real chicken, uh, not my cell phone. I can't turn it off because, like I said, I live in the country. Um, but I turned business owners into purpose-driven people as well. And as I trained them and refocused them and took this amount of knowledge and in two and three and four years, turned them into business owners and operators, they now run the companies that I build, they run the companies that they grow, they run the companies we acquire. So I have no employees, I have only strategic and tactical operators. And for that reason, the entire business model is driven on purpose. That has led me to an opportunity and what I'm trying to shake down for you here is as you keep going through that purpose, it will simply be defined greater and greater. Things like speaking on the global speakers talk today and getting involved with a private equity company that is all veteran backed, veteran focused, and we're going to be pushing into companies that will be purchased for the intent that veterans will run them, give their family and them an opportunity to turn all their lives around or turn their lives forward or give them the opportunity to keep going forward after uh, their military uh, time ends and get them to a position within 60 months to own that company. So it is a very purpose uh, driven thing that we're working on, something I'm very proud and honored to be a part of, even though I did not have the honor to serve. My father did serve and uh, two tours in Vietnam and the Navy. Um, I, I love my veteran people, love my friends, need and see that purpose driven and so many veterans who don't get a fair shakedown. And we're giving them the opportunity to do that. So as I leave Voltage forward in private label and physical products, we're now leading even a bigger purpose forward to help more people. So really at the end of the day, guys, what I want you to remember um, from anything anybody said today or anything you may have gained from me, um, literally the opportunity begins at the end of your excuses. Whatever it may be, uh, the greatest challenge you have is to change the person you think you are now into the person you want to become and then believe it's a reality. And that all starts in your mind. It all starts with action today, working on the biggest uh, mental muscle you've got, which is training yourself every day and conditioning yourself to look and act in abundance. Abundance is everywhere around us. 
It's just limiting and scarcity belief that makes it feel like it's not near you right now. And that could be money, could be family, could be a relationship, could be whatever. But in actuality, it's there. And the moment you start to recognize and realize that it is there, whatever activity you take in business, whatever line of business you take in time, when the right time occurs, you will ultimately get there. Perseverance and tenacity and a driven person are 10 times more dangerous than anybody else in this world. And I think everybody here on this call feels that they understand it. They may not know how to get it yet. They may not know what particular area to go after, but all I'm going to tell you is the first step you take and the next step you take and three feet after that, you'll be able to see where you're going and just move, shift and pivot through that. The opportunities will present themselves and in time, a little bit of luck will happen in business the longer you're in business. Okay, It's just a byproduct of time and market. So get out there, do something today. And remember, ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? If you already know the answer, then go out in bold and fortune. Again, favors the bold. Go out, act boldly, take action. Starts right now, today. Not thinking about taking action, not wondering if you can start tomorrow. Literally go out and start today. Imperfect action and something perfect will happen along the way.